Hi, I'm Randy Marsava. Let's do business for God. Pray along with me. I want to read from 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I want to mention this. Um, the guy, the pillow guy from the television ads, Mike Lindell, he was on Flashpoint the other night with uh, Gene Bailey. And he revealed an invention. Uh, I won't try and uh, describe the details because I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, as I was saying, I can't explain everything about it because I'm not that familiar with it, this electronic device, but it's pocket-sized. And um, Mike explains that, I'm going to say the brains, the brains in this device and the capability in this device, anybody can have one. Uh, you don't have to be a bazillionaire to own one of these things. And he's producing them on a, on a large scale so that they're distributed and everybody can have one to achieve what needs to be achieved. And uh, some of the attributes of this machine, I'll call it, is when you're carrying it, if you went to a voting center to vote, to cast your vote, when you go in there, if the uh, people that are working there say, oh, we're, things like, oh, we're, we're offline, we can't. Uh, do what we want to do right now because of this or you know computer or this or that or the other thing this takes all of that bull and exposes by uh, the brains that are built into this thing so much uh, I'm not going to try and explain it all he was on flashpoint uh, what's the date today this is about the uh, 16th of August 23 roughly and uh, he was on Flashpoint, and I believe that that was on a either a Tuesday or a Wednesday, so you can find that program. And he explains it in, in very, very uh, capable detail. And there's other guests that are on that uh, show, that particular uh, episode, that explain some things that really need to be explained. Um, I can say it like this. This device 
when there's shenanigans going on concerning elections or different things, and let me throw this in for free. When, no, not for free, just for uh, information's sake. Uh, when I was watching this show, and he was explaining about how this reveals electronic shenanigans and lies and falsehoods in detail, one thing after another after another, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, what do you suppose that tells you about these electronic lotteries? I thought, oh yeah. Oh, we could go so many places with that, but I don't want to put that into this today. So he had this uh, device in his hand and he was showing it. They were talking about it. And, and I thought, and it was, uh, most of the topic of it was about the elections. That was the reasoning and stuff. And when this was going on, it's like the Holy Spirit poked me in the ribs. You know, when you're sitting there watching stuff with the Holy Spirit, he's sitting beside you. And he'll poke you in the ribs and say, oh, by the way, he'll, he'll give you wisecracks and uh, words of wisdom and witty, witty sayings and witty inventions. And he did that with when we were, we were sitting there, when I was sitting there watching this thing. So this is uh, an electronic device. And this is what the Lord said to me. That's what it is. Now, I thought that was pretty cool. Not an electronic device, but an electronic. Okay. That's, that's a case of the Holy Spirit. He's right here, right now, and that's a manifestation of it right there. Yeah, I'm going to tell this story. I released a video. I checked my dates. I went on my site and I checked the dates on this. So I believe I'm correct in researching my dates. On August the 1st, I did a video. And in the video, I talked about I had seen a movie. This is on the the uh, the video of August the 1st. And I, I had seen a, an old movie, actually, made in the 30s. And I'm not going to go into all of that because I, I, it's on that video. You go look it up. And I talked about uh, ceremonies being done by, and I'm going to say pagan ceremonies, being done by people that are exercising pagan, pagan things. And I discussed at some length about in these ceremonies, there's smoke. And I talked about smoke a lot because I was being prodded by the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to sit here and talk about smoke for half an hour. But he was prodding me, and I'm just going along with it. I was along for the ride, so to speak, with the Holy Ghost. And I talked about smoke a lot and how there is in pagan things, when they're doing smoke things, whether it's smoke in a peace pipe or a fire that's producing smoke or sending smoke signals with a blanket or with a with an air gun or whatever. But when those smoke things are taking place, those people that are doing that in those pagan things, they are doing that with a purpose. It's not just being done uh, for nothing, willy-nilly. It means, you know, it's all over the place, but it means nothing. That's not the case. They have a goal in mind. There's a purpose to that. They are summoning and speaking to false gods. Demons. Okay. So I went along with the Holy Spirit having me talk about this. I put I put some energy into it. I put some uh, you know yeah, some energy into this thing and I'm going along with it. 
Um, I didn't want to delve into a, a huge research thing on what we were just talking about here. I was satisfied to just leave it at what he said to me and that's it. And then over the next few days after that, I would kind of in my, in my mind's eye, I would, you know, glance over at what I had talked about and all that. And, and then I would get away from it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to bury myself in the thing. So in the news, in the last couple of weeks, there has been uh, a huge news article that hit the media about uh, this huge fire that they had in um, Hawaii. And I happened to notice in one of these news blurbs, I noticed the name of the place, and it's called Lahaina. And I kind of glanced at it. I'm not really interested in it. It's a case that's got nothing to do with me. And uh, so I watched a bit of the article. Not a lot. But the name of the place stood out to me. And so I looked at that. And I thought, well, that doesn't mean anything to me because I don't know that place or, or, or anything about it. And within a short time, the Holy Spirit said to me, do a, a word uh, study, minor, minor. Look up that word Lahaina and look on Wiki and um, learn about that town. Learn about its past. And learn about what's going on there recently and now. Find out about that place. So I did. Not exhaustive. Just, just learned some things about it. Got an, an understanding of what's there, etc. And I just kind of wasn't looking for in-depth. So I, I sort of left it at that. And then, you know, a couple of days or whatever went by. And up so kokoshima ma 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 na ba da 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 kete te te kete si apoto kokoshin sti kete te kai kai ma na ba da 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 kete te 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 kete uh, fire disaster. There was a lot of smoke involved. Needless to say, smoke on a on a grand scale. And like I said in the days after I saw that article, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said this. He said that video that you made, or I had you talking about smoke, smoke in ceremonies with the Indians, uh, smoke in ceremonies and stuff with the Africans. He said, find that video. So I went back and I found the date of the video. I checked into that video to make sure it was exactly what he was talking about and at the at the three minute and 33 seconds uh, mark in the video I start talking about the smoke you can see it on the video yourself it's from August the 1st the video was released I believe on August the 1st so he said to me look and find out when did the fire start in Lahaina? 
So I went on the news, uh, records, things, and the first testimony that I could find of the Lahaina fire, there was a resident of the Lahaina area, and I'm doing this from memory, so don't, don't get micro on me. Um, the, the resident said that about at 10.45 p.m. at night on, let me get my date here, on August the 7th, Uh, there had been a windstorm and a storm, and he says that uh, the storm blew a tree, and the tree hit the electric wires, and it started the fire. And of course, where there's fire, there's smoke. Now again, we're talking about smoke in this news article. This is smoke on a grand scale this is this this was a big fire like anybody that's the news people the local people everybody that, that's talking about this this was not some small you know uh nothing fire they had a terrible fire there terrible smoke terrible damage so the lord says to me you know see when that fire started what was the date and check your date well the video was released on august the first according to what I've learned, if I'm correct, the fire started on August the 7th. So that was either six or seven days after the video on all this smoke from ceremonies, etc. It's roughly a week later after the Holy Spirit told me, talk about this today. Talk about smoke. Smoke in ceremonies. Uh, smoke in... Um, rituals so This almost begs the question of, and I'm not looking to do a, a huge research on this. What has been going on in that place, in that area? Has there been something going on there that would generate this? For example, if there's pagan rituals, pagan um, events that involve a lot of smoke, that involve calling upon the gods of smoke and uh, and war, etc. I'm 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 talking to preaching to and teaching a smart crowd here. You are a smart crowd. You're getting stuff from the Holy Spirit right now, just like popcorn. And again, I invite your comments. You know. Talk to me. Go ahead. Make my day. Talk to me about these things. Give me some feedback. I speak often of, in 1 Corinthians, I want to quote it instead of, instead of read it. In 1 Corinthians 2, 4, which speaks of demonstration of the spirit and of power. This is, this is a manifestation. What we're dealing with, you know, what we're into right here in this conversation. This is, this is a, an exact example of demonstration of the spirit and of power. How did I know to talk about that a week before it happened? I sure wasn't over there. I have no interest in being over there. But the Holy Spirit, He knows things to come. And He shows us things to come. He speaks to us of things to come. Um, in my generation, there's been uh, a phrase since, I don't know how long, even before I was born, where somebody will say, man, that guy, he's Johnny on the spot. When something's going on, he's Johnny on the spot. Da, 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 da. That's what the Holy Spirit will make you. 
He'll make you Johnny on the spot. You will know things before anybody else does, and it doesn't make sense. How could you possibly know that? Well, it's the Holy Ghost, and you got the Holy Ghost. You're full of the Holy Ghost. You're wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost on the inside. Oh, I see. Okay, we're going to go there. Some of you have had to deal with some witchcraft issues, and some of you think you have been dealing with witchcraft. Not always the same. Ephesians chapter 6. There's more with us than there is with the enemy. Always. Okay, watch this. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. Uh, one more time. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Demons are not flesh and blood. They're fallen spirits. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, let's go to Galatians 5.20. go to 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Now verse 20 mentions witchcraft. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, and it goes on. But in verse 19 it says the works of the flesh the works of the flesh in in that category is witchcraft some of you didn't know that before you've never known that so let's let's park there for a little bit now the works of the flesh are manifest and in the list is witchcraft so i'm going to shorten to that to that now the works of the flesh are manifest including witchcraft including witchcraft including witchcraft now, I want to say right here, Jesus is the name above every name that is named in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every knee must bow. Doesn't have a choice. I said must. I didn't say it should. Must bow to the name of Jesus. I can remember old uh, films of Roman soldiers going through the streets. The big cheese is on a chariot coming up behind. And the people are ordered to bow the knee, bow down, bow the knee to the big cheese that's coming in a second, in a few moments, on the chariot. And if the people didn't bow the knee, then the Roman soldiers would take a staff or a stick and then whack them on the lower leg around the knee, and they'd bow the knee. They didn't have a choice. Well, Jesus is the name above every name that is named in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every, every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. And believe me, when Jesus walks through, you will very voluntarily bow the knee. You'll be, you'll be so glad to see him, experience his presence, everything that he carries Oh yeah, hiding a mama na ba that I kiss this praise God. Oh, rededication of mama na mama na ka Jesus, 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 Hallelujah. Oh, tichiga ba 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 mama na ka shansta ka tere kikuima na mama na kiss this. 
Oh, yeah. We respect you, Jesus. You the man. Hallelujah. Jesus, we respect you. We, we bow the knee. We bow the knee to you, Jesus. Hmm. I saw a scene from, uh, from a movie. And in this in this scene in this movie, a sheriff had traveled a huge distance across the country to arrest a guy for something. And he found him, and the people there, uh, this man had now he'd gotten married as a child, and the people there in the area, they, they loved him. They fell in love with his family, and they, they, they loved these, this family. And this sheriff shows up, and he says, well, I'm taking him back. And the local people talked quietly behind the scenes and said, uh, uh, one way or another, he ain't taking that. So they, they had full intentions that they're going to bump the sheriff off if he pushed the issue, if he pressed it. And it was getting pretty tense. And it was time to leave. The sheriff was taking him away. And in rides three guys on horses into the scene. And this one guy, uh, he, he had authority for some reason whether it was his position, money, or his strength. But he rode in at the head of these three guys. And, uh, you know, typical in Western style, leans over on the horn of the saddle, looks at the sheriff, and he says, you're not taking that guy anywhere. And the sheriff's a tough guy. And the sheriff goes, uh, are we going to have trouble here? And the guy that had rode in, he reached inside his jacket like this and he pulls out a piece of paper and he gives it to the sheriff. <laughs> the sheriff looks at this piece of paper and his face, his face changes, his countenance changes. And that piece of paper, when he saw it, when his eyes saw the paper and his brain reacted to it, he, he knew this changes everything. That's exactly what happened in this scene. Really, his eyes saw it, his brain registered, and he, he knew, he didn't think, and maybe, no, 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 he knew this piece of paper, it changes everything. This deal, it's done. Dropped like a hot rock. Thud. Don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's go. Uh, let's go, go do something else. Well, I had seen that scene from that movie, and there was something about it that really <coughs> jumped out at me and spoke to me. I I didn't know everything at the time, but. Uh, shortly thereafter, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, hey, remember that scene from that movie? And the guy realized, this changes everything. I thought, yeah, sure. And then he unfolded in my mind's eye something. This is what I saw. I saw people, I believe this was in the Canadian government, and the people that I saw, they were on, uh, 
I would probably refer to them as, as they're the highest level of government in, in the country of Canada. So these guys were high ups. And some guy, in my mind's eye, I saw these guys and they were maybe walking in the hall talking with each other and or maybe standing around. And somebody walked into the scene, so to speak, in my mind's eye. And this guy's all excited. And he says to one of the other guys, one of the other men, probably women there too, he said, hey, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. So he shoved this paper under this guy's nose, and the guy looks at it, and the guy's face changes, just like in the movie I just referred to. He, he sees the paper, his eyes register, his brain digests what he's just seen, and he go in his face, his countenance just goes whoop, totally changes. And he hands it to the next guy. Same thing happens. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Until the paper came to uh, the guy named Trudeau. And they shoved that paper under his nose. And he looked, he looked down at it, he looked at it, and he goes, and I can remember, I'll try and imitate uh, his uh, reaction. He looked down at the paper and he goes, without saying anything, just went, which means, oh well. It's very clear. Oh well. And all those guys that were standing there, they were thinking and some of them were saying it. This changes everything. This changes everything. This cha and They kept repeating this. And everybody on down the line through the building, everybody was saying the same thing. This changes everything. This changes everything. I find this curious. I don't want to get off into a bunny trail here. But they kept saying, this changes everything. This changes everything. It's like when 9-11 happened, I'm laying in bed totally totally asleep, zonk, gone, totally asleep, and I sit up in bed like a mechanical man, and, and I'm instantly, I'm instantly awake, I mean crispy, clear, total clear thinking, I'm instantly awake, and I'm sitting up in bed like a, you know, like a mechanical man, there's a pause, 15 seconds maybe, and I hear this, there has been a change, that was on Saturday morning. Tuesday morning, I believe it was, the, the uh, crazy guys hit the Twin Towers. And within, within an hour, all of the news media people were using this phrase. There has been a change. There has been a change. Those same exact five words that were spoken to me when I sat up in bed that day, the news people, media, they were saying those exact five words not six and not four those five so these guys these politicians that i'm talking about the canadian government they're going wow this changes everything now here's that word change again you know it, it's cropping up again you know there it is oh there it is again there it is again there it is again there it is again so like a detective you got to pay attention to this stuff connect the dots you'll you'll pick up on things that you, you didn't pick up on before, and you'll go, oh, that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit meant. Because, man, he knows everything. He's the original smarty pants. I'm telling you, he knows everything. Like I said, lots of times trying to be cute. You listen to the Holy Ghost, you'll be the smartest guy at show and tell. Every time. So, when I saw Mike Lindell on Flashpoint with Gene Bailey the other night, that came to my mind. That came to my mind. This changes everything. This changes everything. This changes everything. About five months ago, I sent out uh, texts and emails to my most well-known people, and I... I told them, I said, the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell everybody. I'm picking up the, the, the uh, phrase, 
law change, <clears throat> as in a changing of a law. I'm picking up the phrase law change. So I'm, I'm asking everyone, telling everyone, pray about a law change. Okay? Roughly five months ago. I'm sewing this stuff together. And the Holy Spirit is sewing this stuff together in you too. So when I saw Lindell on uh, Flashpoint the other night, I'm reminded of that. Law change. This changes everything. You're not taking that guy anywhere. Oh, see, got my This device that Lindell's got. If I knew more about uh, tech stuff, I, I could say it better. But when you walk into, for example, a voting center, and they start shooting you a line of bull, oh, we're offline. We can't do this function right now. Oh, we can't do that function right now. This device, it shows uh, the name of, of every person within the, within the circumference or whatever you call it, closeness to this machine. It shows their name, their cell phone number, uh, something about Wi-Fi in the area, something about another identifying uh, item in the area, because I don't know this tech stuff. Uh, something else about an identifying thing going on in the area, a function that's happening at the very moment when you're there because you're there with this device. I have a hunch that this invention that Mike exposed uh, what's the proper word? He exhibited. Um, it's like it was deb his the, the machine's debut or something. I I got a hunch that this is a case of this changes everything. Because when any everybody and his brother can walk in with a device that's about the same size as a cell phone, a little bit thicker, can go, hey, don't try and shoot me that line of bull anymore. Look, I got your name. Your name. Hey, you crooked guy. I got your name right here. It's showing up on my device. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, else this reminds me of. Praise God. I had no intention of doing this. But it seems like there's a bunch of stuff being sewed together today. Bunch of knitting. Bunch of knitting. Bunch of knitting. I've explained more than once, once on video. And... Uh, here and when this happened I had the capability to copy and write it down and I had the ability to record what I'm this I'm not gonna do the whole thing today uh, I had the ability to record it that night on the spot within I had the uh, Recorder going within uh, probably 90 seconds. So I caught it. I didn't lose any of it. But like I said, so this device, when you have this device with you, I tell you what it reminds me of on Star Trek when we were kids. Uh, one of the one of the uh, stars, he would use a device, and they called it a tricorder. I think they, he said, "Took a tricorder reading," and this tricorder, it was Mr. Smarty Pants in a in a little box. Man, it told you all kinds of stuff. You know the, how far away people were, what they were made out of. Are they humans? Are they you know all this stuff? And this kind of reminds me of that. So I had I had the Holy Spirit show up one night. I have the date. Oh, right in front of my face. December the 17th, 2020 is about 8 minutes to 12 midnight. And normally, I'm not up doing paperwork at, eight, at, at midnight, believe me. This happened at December the 17th, 20. And he unfolds in front of me this thing. It takes, 
uh, it's all on copy like I said it takes about between five and six minutes for me to say it and I'm not going to say it today I'm going to refer to a scene if you will and that is this there's this Chinese guy the name of this uh, vision I, I had to put a handle on it uh, so I call it the big gamble this guy this Chinese guy is at a gambling table A gamble has been being set up on a massive, and massive doesn't even touch it, scale for decades. And he makes the decision right at the gambling table, yes, I'm going to place my bet. So he shoves this mountain of chips, very, very valuable chips onto the table. The guy that runs the table as they say in the casinos <clears throat> he acknowledges the guy yes i accept i accepted that and then he grabs a hold of this like a big lever or something a gear shift in a semi something like that and he engages the bed well when he does that there is this monstrous noise and the lord told me to use this word for de uh, description the word snap it's not a bang, it's not a pop. So I've been you've been told. There's this massive snap, and I'm telling you, this thing is so loud, you know, you had to be there. It is so loud, it's indescribable. He pulls the lever and then there's this snap. Well, at the same time that there's this snap, which is a huge noise, there's a flash of light. And this flash of light, this is not normal. It's not a normal flash of light. Light. This flash of light is so bright and strong and uh, penetrating, revealing, magnifying. And you could give me ten more words and I'd go along with it. But when this flash happens, it is so bright, <clears throat> then in my mind's eye, I see this Chinese guy standing there. And the light, when we were kids, they had flash bulbs on cameras. And it was very bright. And this flash of light, this Chinese guy is standing there, and it, it just came across like this flash of light was sort of directed at him. Maybe it was everybody, but I was seeing him. So this flash of light hits this Chinese guy, and it is so bright that it, it illuminates every, not just cell in his body, it illuminates every molecule in his body. Every, uh, maybe I should use the word atom. <laughs> it, it illuminates everything in this guy. It is so bright, and I'm getting the word definition. It is so defining in what happens with this guy. Um, the world would use the word spooky or kooky. Like it's this light, I'll describe it best I can. What happens when this light hits this guy? It, it, like a magnifying, it magnifies every atom, cell, molecule, so that, let's say, for illustration, every molecule, you can see them. You can see every molecule so that it's, it looks like it's that big. And you, you look at it and go, wow. And then when you look at that molecule, because we've just picked one out at random, that molecule has a story in there. Every single thing that that guy has ever done since he was born and things that happened to him in the womb before he was born, and I'm not going to try and trace anything back farther than that. I don't want to put the time into it. But everything that has ever happened to that guy, that one particular cell, each one of them, all of them in his body, Every one of them has a story. So when this 
flash of light illuminates this guy, you got to know this. This is key. When it illuminates this guy, you are capable because, of, uh, uh, how can I say this? The way the Lord revealed it to me is this. Go ahead and read that guy. So I took some time and I looked at that molecule or cell. And then I looked at that one. And you know there's uh, trees. Trees, when you cut down a tree, it has rings. Those rings tell the story of that tree. Every year is a ring on a tree. And you can tell by, you can take that ring, put it under a microscope, and scientists will tell you, that was a dry year. That ring there, that thin one, because some of them are broad. That thin ring in that tree, that means that that was a dry year. That was a tough year for that tree. They didn't get much rain. And this happened and that, da 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 Okay, so the rings tell the story. Well, it was like this in the, this in the guy's body. And by, by being able to see every single atom or molecule, I, and, and it told a story. What I'm trying to get at is, I knew everything about this guy. And so did everybody else standing around him. Because this guy, it, his body was uh, sort of like, you know, there's a negative and a photo photograph, and then you can blow up the negative, and you know. It, he, listen, this guy had no secrets. Good, bad, or indifferent. This guy had no secrets. And even, of course, even he, when this light hit him, I noticed this when I was looking at him, too. That he was, he was like this. He was totally shocked because he's standing there. You might say he's bare naked. Got nothing to do with clothing. It's the cells, the molecules. They're everything about that guy is right in front of you, on a on a, um, and everything is enlarged. All the cells are enlarged so that you can you know you can go right up to to one cell and go hmm what is this cell? Okay, this cell here is uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He stubbed his toe when he was 14, you know, and, and, uh, some of those, you know, and the, you know, the, you know the, this uh, dramatic thing and when he was 15 and all this kind of thing. So you're, you're, you're knowing everything about this guy. This guy had no secrets. Reminds me of a scripture that says, there is nothing hidden before the Lord. Nothing. Sweetheart, you can think you buried stuff. Uh, there is nothing hidden before the Lord. Nothing. Zero. Nothing is hidden before the Lord. And that was the case with this guy here. When that light hit him, I'll tell you, standing beside him, you'd go like this and you'd go, holy smokes, I know everything about that human being. Everything. There was absolutely nothing that wasn't being exposed and magnified, if you will. Every attribute, every, 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 everything was being exposed. Everything was being exposed. And this invention that uh, Mike Lindell um, showed, I'm not saying it's going to do that. That's not what I'm saying. But it reminds me of this, this word from the Lord in my mind's eye that I received uh, some, what, three years ago, whatever it is. It does remind me of that. And several of the things that I've talked about today, you know, especially if you watch the video the second time, you'll see how the first thing I started talking about, now you got the thread out, reminds me of... <laughs> I said this to a guy on the phone the other night because we were talking about some of this stuff. You know the threads on a football? They're not little fine threads like would be in a, in a, in a jacket like I have on. The threads, uh, they call it the old pigskin. The threads that they sew up a football with, it's lacing. It's actually called lace. Those are big, heavy threads, if you will or lacing and these things that were tying together from the beginning of this video and many others reminds me of the scripture line upon line precept upon precept God's sewn this stuff together I picked up 
so many things to talk about on this video today that I called especially for my producer to come and this video that I'm making today normally this video would be in the can for maybe maybe a month but I've I've called for this video to be released within the next three days because I felt urgency about this particular one there's a lot of things in the spirit and in the natural that are happening right now I'm hearing this from that minister from that preacher from that guy and that woman and this and there's a lot going on it seems like you know it reminds me of um, a funnel you know a funnel a funnel is shaped like so and if you watch a funnel and something going through it, especially a glass funnel you'll see that as it gets closer to the open uh, the uh, exit a lot of stuff get crammed in there all at once and it's like all of the materials are trying to get through there all at the same time. They're all trying to get through, get where they're going. It feels a bit like that in the spirit right now. There's a lot going on. It seems like there's a lot of things trying to happen and uh, get done. Now, anybody that's familiar with the things of the spirit and um, understands urgency in the spirit, you'll be picking up, you'll, you're getting things from the Holy Spirit right now. This is a sharp crowd that I speak to. Like it says in, in the word. Oh, you that are thirsty. You that are hu hungry. Come and drink. Come buy and eat. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, praise God. Oh, you take a